So the properties dialog box changes as I click on different aspects of my model. If I add things like a door, um, so I click on door in my home ribbon and I place the door in the wall, then notice that my properties dialog box has changed to the door. Um, once I have something placed, I can change it. So I click on my component, click that drop down, and just like when we were changing walls, I can change the size of the door, um, the style of the door. You know, I've got all sorts of things here that I could use for that door. I'm going to just leave it the way it is. Um, one of the things that you might have noticed as I was placing that door is that um, Revit has the concept of hosting. And so in other words, when I click on door and I go to place that door, notice I get the uh, cannot do symbol on my cursor until I hover over a wall and then it changes my cursor to a crosshair where I have a door attached to it. So Revit knows that I can't just place a door out here in the middle of my building. I need to actually place a door in a wall. And so then it'll let me do it. So let's talk about this project browser over here. The idea in Revit is that we are creating one model. And so in a traditional architectural setting, uh, to create this um, building, we would have done a floor plan and then uh, perhaps an exterior elevation. So let's slide down in our project browser here. I want to see this west wall that has this door in it. So I'm going to go to the west elevation, just double click on that, and it's going to open it in uh, my view window. Um, perhaps I wanted to see the north elevation as well that has that other door in it. So I'm going to double click on that and it changes my view to that. Notice if I zoom in a little bit I'm actually seeing um, the trim and things that are on that door. Let me see if I can hover just a little. There we go. So there's that door that's in my west wall and I'm seeing it in my north elevation and things like that. Uh, but the the goal here is that we are just building one model. So in traditional architecture where I would have had a drawing that represents each one of these, all I'm doing is creating a model and then using my project browser to generate the views that I need for my project. So I'm going to um, click on the view tab up here and over on the right hand end there's a little button here that says tile windows. So click on tile windows and now I'm going to see what's going on with my project here. It's got whatever windows I had open it's going to tile and make those into one view here on my um, view window. So I resized and recentered those. And so what I want to show you is the idea that we are parametric here and this really is just one model. So I'm going to click on this north wall just to select it and you're going to notice when I select it in my floor plan view it's going to be selected in all of my views. So I know that it's selected because it turned blue and notice it turned blue here on my 3D representation. It turned blue on my north elevation and it turned blue on my west elevation. Um, so I really am just working with one model. So that wall is a um, basic wall exterior brick on wood stud and I'm going to change my mind about what I want that wall to be. I'm going to use that drop down and change that to wood shingle on wood stud. The next selection down. And then I'm going to just click in my white space here just to deselect that wall. And now I can see in my 3D it's changed from red brick to a brownish shingle. So uh, I can really see that this really is just one model. Uh, I can demonstrate that again just by uh, going into my 3D view here and selecting this door that's in this uh, west wall. So I selected it, I clicked on it, I'm going to hit the delete button on my keyboard. The, the door goes away in my model and obviously in all of my views. So my west elevation, my floor plan, and my 3D. So it really is just one model that I'm creating and my project browser is helping me to organize my views. So I'm going to um, go into this properties dialog box here and just click the red X and close that box. And what I'm doing, I want to just maximize how much of this project browser that we can see just so that we can organize it just a little bit and, and explore. So 
um, my views, that's what everything is in Revit, is it's a view. Whether it's a schedule or a drawing or a rendering or an animation, it really is just a view of my model. And so I've got floor plans, and you'll notice in the various templates, if you started in a commercial template, this is going to look a little bit different, or if you started in a default template, it'll look even more different. And uh, so the, the preset floor plans available to you change by template. In the residential template it's set up for first floor and second floor and then the various views that go along along with that like framing and electrical and stuff like that. And then you've got ceiling plans of first and second floor. You've got 3D views and I'm going to slide down in here. Then you've got elevations. And then uh, below that we've got things like legends, schedules, sheets, families, groups, and Revit links. So let's not worry about those yet. Let's just look at these um, floor plan views, ceiling plans, and elevations. So let's say I'm going to go to this floor plan. I'm going to maximize this just to take up the whole window here. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And let's say that I want to create a section that goes through my house from back to front so that I can explore what's going on there. So I click on my section tool on my ribbon here and uh, that changes it to uh, create section and I'm going to click once outside of my house up here and then once outside down here and that created my section view for me. So notice over in my project browser now I've got this sections uh, selection that wasn't there before I click on the plus and I have section one so um, now I can uh, open that section just by double clicking on it and now I can see there's my house I'm looking through it uh, I can see what's going on let me turn on some shaded here and so now I can get a little bit better contrast I can see what's there zoom in a little bit if I turn on fine detail now I can see my walls and if I turn on thin lines up here at the top I can zoom in on that wall and actually see what the wall is made out of. So there's my wall, uh, wood shingle on wood stud, and I can see the various components that are in it. Uh, if I want to get into that a little bit deeper I'll show you how to do that here in a few minutes. So the, the project browser is interactive and it keeps up with you as I create views. Let me go back to my floor plan view. Slide up, double click on floor plan. I want to see uh, what this area looks like in 3D. Let me, let me put in a component first. Let's go to home and let's go to component. And oh, I need to get back my properties box here. Um, so let me hit view then user interface that drop down and select properties now I have my properties dialog backs back and I'm gonna place some kind of a piece of furniture in there doesn't really matter what it is um, this thing had desks maybe not Do to do sofa let's put a sofa in there so I'm gonna put a 72 inch sofa against this wall somehow so it's on my cursor I can place it wherever I want I'm just going to click right there to place it beside the door and then I want to see what that looks like in 3D. So I'm going to create a 3D view so I'm on my view tab still. Um, I click on the drop down underneath the little house where it says 3D view and I click on camera. A camera view, uh, my first click will be to place my camera so that's kind of where the tripod is going to stand and then my second click so I've, I've now placed my tripod my second click will be what I'm looking at so you can have it look at whatever you want I'm gonna have it look and see the window or I'm sorry the door and the couch or the sofa so I click and there's my view and so over here in my project browser the whole reason why I'm doing this I'm gonna slide down into 3d views and there's that view that I just created I'm going to turn on um, shaded down here in my view controls and I'm going to expand that window just a little bit by pulling on my drag buttons. Uh, let me zoom out, recenter that. There we go. So now I've got a view of how the, the sofa is going to sit beside the door or whatever. So that might be important. Um, I can organize my project browser over here by renaming this. So that 3D view that I just created says 3D view 1. Well, that's not very descriptive. So I'm going to hover over that and do a right click on my mouse. 
and hit the rename option on that flyout menu. And I'm going to cover, call that um, 3D sofa and door. And then click OK. And notice it changed the name here. And then I want to show you when I slide down to my sheets. So Revit is already set up with a bunch of sheets available. Um, it's not going to resize for me. Um, and one of the sheets that I've got, let's see, where can I stick this uh, 3D view? Uh, I'm going to call it an interior elevation, even though that's not what it is. Uh, so I'm going to um, open sheet A13 just by double clicking on it. Right now, there's nothing on that sheet. So I'm going to slide up to that um, 3D sofa and door. I'm going to hold down my left mouse button to select it and just drag it over let go of my button and just place it on the sheet. When I do that, notice when I zoom in here, the drawing name or the view name, the 3D sofa and door, went with me automatically. So that name comes from my project browser. If I take this building section one and drag that, that's the one that we created through the house, drag that out and place it. It's also called section one. If I wanted to change that, I can certainly do that. But let's see what happened up here on our floor plan. I'm going to slide up to floor plan and double click. Now notice this was blank before. This had little dashes in here. Now that section that I just placed on A13 as the second item is called out as 2 on A13. So Revit is automatically coordinating things like that for us.